I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Do your own research. Consult a professional investment advisor before making any investment decisions. This show is for entertainment only. Faites vos propres recherches. Here we are. In another episode. And the Simple Success Podcast. And this is Financial Life Coaching from a Happiness Perspective. Before we proceed, please tell me that the title of today's podcast is not a trick question. I will give you my word that it's not a trick question. Why would you even think that? Because increasing income is one thing, but increasing one's income monthly seems to be too hard to do, if not impossible. But of course, we're here to simple, to simplify some of these finance and life issues that seem tricky. We're taking words like impossible out of our vocabulary. You aren't going to talk about the I'm possible thing, I hope. Not to worry, dear DT. People can YouTube that if they must. It's not a bad idea, but I'm not doing it here. Phew. Now that you've got that out of the way, can you start with the don'ts? With the don'ts, I mean the pitfalls to avoid if I am trying to increase my monthly income. Most definitely. That's a good idea. You know, one of the pitfalls to avoid, which I've already touched on, is to have a mind shift and avoid some crippling words and attitudes. Check. I have heard you loud and clear. I'll avoid them like I did COVID-19. In the game of finances, and it applies in all areas of life, success or failure starts in the mind. The seeds you sow in your mind will be what you reap. Many people want the monthly increases to be big, month in, month out. Yeah, and that's another mindset that you should change. Often, the beginning will be small, and if you're not careful, that might discourage you. Oh, you must be talking about patience again. That I am, and it's learned with practice. And if you're bored by that, you might not be patient enough yet. Hmm, I've been there before. I started small. Then thought it wasn't worth it. It wasn't. Don't be discouraged if and when the increases come in drips and drops. Take it one day at a time. One day at a time. Touche. That's a great maxim. One day at a time. One day at a time. Yeah, you notice how I slowed it down there? That helps with fixing it in your mind. Rome wasn't built in a day, you know. You may have the big picture concerning the big increases you envisage for your income, but don't Throw in the towel if the big increase is a long time in coming. I heard someone say that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Yeah, that's that Einstein guy again. But what's that got to do with what we're talking about? I'm going somewhere with this. If I keep on doing what I'm doing, but I'm not getting the increase or desired results, should I keep on doing what I'm doing? If it's broken, fix it. But if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Instead, try to make it work more efficiently. I wish I could put that advice on repeat for other folks like me who are struggling with getting results. You will not always get the results you desire in the first few months, you know. In such matters, success is never a straight line. I get it. There are twists and turns. Not to mention that some months you will stall. It seems like this process of increasing my monthly income is not for the faint-hearted. You got that right. You want to know what else you got right? Pray tell. You've referred to this as a process. And that's exactly what it is. A process has something like a ton of variables to contend with. Why is it important for me to see this as a process and not a one-time event? Because if you perceive it as a one-time event you will be plagued with a thing called the arrival syndrome. The arrival syndrome? That calls for an explanation, methinks. Okay, what I mean is, if you reach an amount that you had previously set and stay there, you're likely to rest on your laurels. Pardon me, excuse me, moi, whatever. But what does rest on your laurels mean? This phrase means to be so satisfied with what you've already done or achieved that you don't make any further effort. 
that's akin to the arrival syndrome, and it's not a good way to use goals. Oh, I see what you mean. It's like you're a fly on the wall right inside my home. Really? Why do you say that? I have the habit of always resting on my laurels. I didn't know that was such a bad thing. When you see whatever you're engaged in as a process, you'll train your mind into continuing on, showing courage, even after you have hit a high and you feel like you've arrived. You mean going and going like the Energizer Bunny? That's what I'm talking about. You keep going and growing and setting new targets every time you hit the ones you've already set. I can see myself doing that. See, it's not rocket science. No, it's not rocket science. It's not even music theory. It's doable. I want to know more. But I'm afraid we'll have to stop for a second. Why? Why? Because it's your favorite part. It's an important message, cleverly disguised as... Break number one. Hello, everyone. This is John with the Simple Success Podcast. Financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Because we know you want to show us some serious love in return for the tremendous benefits you get from us, please subscribe to us in your favorite podcast player. You can find us on both the App Store and the Play Store because our message is for everyone. Leave a rating for us, or even better, tell a friend. Whichever you choose, thank you so much for helping us do this for you. To leave us a written message, which just might lead to more in a future podcast, go to those same written show notes to find our subreddits. There is also our Facebook group page, Twitter, and other ways which we'll tell you about from time to time. You can also find an Easter egg every so often, so listen closely. Thank you again, and keep those constructive ideas coming. In the first section, you gave some don'ts as far as increasing my income monthly is concerned. Would you please now give me some do's? Good idea. My first advice for an increase is to decrease. That sounds cryptic. Can you please break it down? Sure. What I mean is to decrease unnecessary spending habits. At times, the increase is not tied to money that is out there that you're trying to get, but it's tied instead to the money that's already in your hands. But that solution will not work in the long term. That's right. This is a strategy to start you off. The plan is to make sure you are optimally utilizing the money in your hands. To paraphrase that famous saying, a buck in the hand is worth two in the bush. Yeah, a bird, a buck. Okay, I can see the logic in that reasoning. The other way to increase your income monthly is to save your money in a bank account that compounds, compounds, I said, your interest. I've heard that one before. I don't think Einstein would have been impressed by compounding half a percent. No, probably not. And you don't have to settle for that either, but we cover that in another show. For now, just remember to look at the long term. That's why it's called compound interest. The little numbers that you see every month are compounded monthly and get to be big ones before you know it. This ties in with one of the points we discussed in the first part about the income increasing in drips and drops. Yes, thanks, D.D. I'm tying up all those loose ends. I almost missed it. You're welcome. Tying is what I do. I mean, it's what you do. Uh, lo que se. For folks who aren't in the know, what is compound interest? Good, good rewind there. Compound interest is the interest on savings calculated on both the initial principal and the accumulated interest from previous periods. How can compound interest help increase my income monthly? It can't do that exactly. It works on what you've saved or invested. Unlike simple interest, which is calculated only on the principal amount, compounding multiplies money at an accelerated rate by giving interest on the interest. Go on. I'm taking notes and compounding my knowledge while at the same time. Great visual. I do not want to unsee that one. You know, the greater the number of compounding periods, the greater the compound interest will be. Also, I'm into side gigs, side hustles. Can this be another way to increase my income monthly? You got that right. Many people are turning to side hustles to not only increase their income, but to also grow their wealth. I 
No, if people whose side hustles became the main hustles. Yeah, that's happening more often, especially due to how the internet has opened up trading spaces. We are now truly a global village, and you can trade with folks from all corners of the world without leaving the comfort of your living room. And the coming Web3 will make even more of that. The way I see it is, if you have a phone, you have the whole world at your fingertips. And, I dare add, if you have the whole world at your fingertips, what's stopping you from growing your income? Nothing. Nothing. Nada. That's right. You know, I just got a permit from the authorities to turn my garage into a studio apartment. At last. Hey, you did? Huh? What? Oh, yeah, at last. You got that permit you've been chasing for several months. I'm glad you're done with the red tape. I get the feeling this has something to do with today's message. That feeling is so on point. Another way to increase your income is to rent out your vacation home or to look for creative ways to turn the space you're living into something that could generate some income. Is that the same as creating a passive stream of income? It is, and the idea of passive income is to generate an income stream that doesn't require a lot of work from you. Oh, I like that. Now, what are other ways to generate passive income? You can consider exploring some more unorthodox methods of generating passive income. Alternatively, if you have an expertise in a certain niche, you might be able to create an online course or write an informative ebook about the topic of your expertise and sell these items online on marketplaces. What about the some of us who are not creative? Do not see that as a liability. Hit the internet and see what other people are doing to turn around their fortunes. Or you can speak with experts who will guide you. Well, I'm speaking to one, aren't I? You? I'd like to think that, and at times, you may be holding the thing that's supposed to make your income grow, but you just can't see it. An expert can perceive such things and will help you turn passion into profit. I like the sound of that. Turn passion into profit. I have a passion for collecting classic and retro wristwatches. I will try and flip the script and increase my income. Right, like Tom Hanks did with typewriters. Hey, go for it, my friend. There are communities online that are dedicated to your passion. Join them and think of ways to generate income. For instance, you can be a reseller or you could rent out your collection for photography sessions. Yeah, why didn't I see all these possibilities before? Not sure about that, but where do I send you an invoice for my services? You don't. It's just a favor from one friend to another. I owe you one. Okay, Alexa, set a timer for one year. I said one year. Alexa, stop. Lo que sea. Thanks, Alexa. Another way to increase your income is to consider being a freelancer. When I hear the word freelancer, I only think about writing. Understood, but you can be a freelancer in any skill you're proficient in. Let's take your passion. You can be a freelancer in teaching other people how to know real classic wristwatches or how to take care of them. Don't tell me. That's another invoice from you, right? Two separate invoices? Maybe later, but... But first, break number two. We know a lot about you already because we know ourselves. For example, we know that you know how to listen to our podcast. We also know that you probably know how to subscribe. So as soon as you're done with that, tell us your story. We have ways you can contact us. It involves a special link where you can leave us a message. We may have an email address for you as well in the future, and we'll let you know if that happens. The reason for subscribing? I thought you'd never ask. When you subscribe, you automatically download all future episodes of that podcast. It just happens in your player without you having to go search again. How cool is that? This means better rankings for the podcast, more attention from advertisers, and more money. And this means more and better stuff for you. So your motivation is simple and easy. Subscribe to day whatever app and from whatever place you like and don't just try to subscribe there is no try there is only do we're changing the way we look at things and remember that's good eso es bueno simple also remember this is financial life coaching from a happiness perspective coaching happiness our call to action is right in the show notes find it and you win too Can I simple that? Por supuesto. Of course. Just simple it. Please make sure your seat belts are fastened and your tray tables are in their upright position. And make sure simple is a verb like Google is a verb. This is the part I love the most. 
it is time to tie in what we have covered so far into investing. Would you share the lessons you've learned? Okay. Okay. Cool. You're a jet, CD. The biggest lesson I have learned is that our income generating habits and mindsets can be the difference whether we dive deep into investing or waddle in the shallows. It all starts in the mind. If I don't change my mind, then I cannot change my circumstances. I couldn't have put it better. All wealthy people will tell you that they were wealthy in their minds before they made it big. Where the mind leads, the body will follow, and so will the wealth. That's deep. You're giving us such great direction today. What'd you have for breakfast? That's top secret. If I tell you, I'd have to kill you. Arr, if you can't share that secret, would you please share another lesson from today? Sure thing. In investing, you cannot rest on your laurels like we said before. Things are constantly evolving. And if you make the mistake of thinking you've arrived, you'll be left for dead by others. The world just doesn't stop turning. But it revolves, right? I have noticed that smart, wealthy people never say they've arrived. They're constantly moving. Yes, that's true. That's part of the process of life and growth. The only thing that's constant in life is change. Stagnant water attracts parasites and bacteria, which cause disease and death. Disease and death? Arr. I see what you did there. Water is life, and investments are supposed to bring life. You're a model student. The water analogy applies to any stagnant investment. It'll be susceptible to that downward spiral that causes death. And now I'll throw the ball at you. What have you learned? In the second section, you said something about decreasing to increase. That's my key bit of info from today's podcast. John says he'll bite. Yes, I will bite. The floor is yours. Kindly elaborate on what you mean. Okay. When it comes to investing, there are some money spending habits I should decrease. And if need be even kill, I want to increase the chances of survival of my investments. Most entrepreneurs will tell you that for so many years after they started their business, they went on a deferred gratitude spree, often making massive sacrifices to keep their businesses afloat. To the person on the outside looking in, it may seem like the entrepreneur is being miserly or selfish, but they're just engaging in healthy business practice. Yes, you've got it. And it's a discipline which, if you master it, can lead you to amass enormous amounts of wealth. Once you curtail certain spending habits, you'll be in complete control of your financial destiny. We already spoke about habits earlier on. It's strange how things we overlook like habits play a big role in determining financial destiny. Absolutely. Financial habits, spending habits, and saving habits. All these are internal configurations of your mind that you must master. If you want to be the master of your financial destiny. Mm. The other thing I've learned is that I shouldn't be in a hurry to, so to speak, make my investment run with the boys, but to allow it to grow in baby steps. Right. Many people see the big boys making the big moves and they want to play in the same space, but we just started the other day. We don't know the history of such people or their situations. And what's more important, that's not relevant. Our situation is what's relevant to us. I think this is where the adage of trusting the process comes in. I heard someone explain it so well that it stuck with me to date. Sharing is caring, DT. Share what you've learned, s'il vous plaît. They were explaining it using the life cycle of a butterfly, from egg to larva to pupa, and finally to the beautiful and colorful floating adult we all love. <laughs> that takes me way back to the science class in high school. The larva is very different from the adults. It also usually eats different types of food. And how's this relevant? An investment that's in the larva stage is different from big businesses. It also eats different food. Wow. Now it's my turn to gush and say, that's deep. Pupa is in the transition stage. Depending on the species, it can last from a few weeks to a month or even two years. Wow, now that's something to chew on, but let's stay away from the bug stuff. What people want to know, all investments have different transitional phases. What's more, if you try to break the pupa while it's in the transition stage, it will die in that phase and will never make it to adulthood. <laughs> I said, let's stop the bug stuff. Now, investments imitate light. Creation is always teaching us scores of lessons. If you mess up any phase, you'll mess up your chances of increasing, be it in wealth or health or anything else. 
And that's where I still need to learn a bit. And learning calls for a standing ovation. Good job. The final thing I want to share is that in investing, one has to be creative. If you can, take the road that's less traveled. That means also taking risks, right? Yes, but we've already established that. From cradle to grave, life is a series of risks. With every breath of air you take, you're risking. Okay, so it's not just a matter of taking risks. We have to. Just do it. Yep, or just simple it. Once again, like in your butterfly analogy... Life is teaching us that doing some of these seemingly hard things should be second nature. We should be embracing risk and not showing it a clean pair of heels. Life is a risk, and risk is life. The two are joined at the hip. Good leading brings benefits to everyone. Which is why I got into the investing game, and also... Which is how you've all gotten good. Gracias por escuchar. Salut. A la prochaine. This podcast and our other podcast are productions of Little Red Hen Industries. The supporting cast who helps me bake the bread includes Techno King, John C. Brandy, Alter Ego, Doubting Thomas, Fact Checker, a small brown beef animal, seriously, tiny. Facts are important but are also easy. Social Manager, Abraham Lincoln, Media Expert, Augustus Caesar. Psychologist, William James, Sound Designer, Adobe's Creative Suite, Spanish Consultant, Cameron J.K. Brandy, French Consultant, Leah, The Do Your Own Research Lady, Videographer, Eto Moon Koshki, Audio Props, Les Paul, Inspiration, Many Podcasts and Other Sources and of course Napoleon Hill. We also have websites and you can subscribe to both podcasts. You can even send us a video, audio or text message. But of course, you'll have to head to the show notes either on your phone or on the web to get the links and stuff. All the clickable links are in the show notes. And before we forget, the artificial intelligence or AI voices you hear in our work come from Google, Amazon Polly, and OpenAI like we say in the show notes. We just love what AI can do when lovingly crafted. Finally, you can find us on protmatch.com, matchmaker.fm, podbooker and podcast guests where we consider guests and consider guesting on other people's shows and really finally the music for our pods comes from cute by ben sound and from piano background by nick simon adams as well as from ai musenet the sound effect credits go to jackson academy ashmore kanisi g dr jekyll joe Payne, everything sounds mk play more stories erh sand emotions Big Pickle 51, and just kidding, yes that's his or her name, all on freesound.org. Also, languages are the bomb. Paul.